Welcome to Glasgow Elam Church. Thank you for joining with us this morning. We're going to pray as we bring our time together to God. Let's pray together. God, we just praise you and we thank you that we can join together this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us by your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for each person watching, Lord, that you would be with them, Lord, that you would help them. And as pray, as we worship, Lord, we would lift your name up high today in whatever situation we find ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come let us worship my King Come let us bow at His feet He has some great thing See what our Savior has done See how His love overcomes He has some great thing he has some great things. Yeah. Oh, he rules heaven. You conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hey, hey, hey. You have been faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things And I know you will do it again For your promises, yes and amen You have done great things Oh God, you do great things Oh hero of heaven, you come Free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. Oh, we dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Above it all, oh, hallelujah, God, unshakable, oh, hallelujah, you have done great things, yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, God, above it all, oh, hallelujah, God, unshakable, oh, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. God, you do great things. God, you do great things. Yeah. We worship you. Worship 
our King. Oh, come, let us bow at His feet. He has unveiled things. See what a Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive. You break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. you have Great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written oh Jesus Christ our living hope Who could imagine So great a mercy And what heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down That 
God sealed the promise Your very body began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on the promise your very body began to breathe and out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours is the Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, our living hope. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, our living hope. Jesus Christ, our living hope. Oh God, you are. done before in greater measure you'll do again cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can't move all things are possible and there's no moking body you can raise no soul that you can save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up oh god i free five oh let hope arise is overcome and you've already won oh God our free five more you rose in victory and now you see it 
forever on the throne So why should my heart fear What you've defeated I will trust in you alone Cause there's no prison A wall you can't break through No mountain you can't move Things are possible. There's no broken a body you can raise, no soul that you can save. All things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up. Oh, you can light it up. Oh, God. is overcome oh you've already won oh God of revival oh God of revival yeah. come wake in your peace Come wake in this city Oh God of revival Pour it out, pour it out The heavy stronghold will crumble Hear the chains hit the ground Oh God of revival Pour it out, pour it out Come awake in your people Come awake in the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. Cause I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. The dark is overcome oh you've already won oh God of revival oh come awake come awake in your people come awake in the city oh God of revival pour it out pour it out every stronghold will crumble Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Oh, oh, oh God of revival, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. God of revival hey, You make all things new is overcome and you've already won oh god of free 
revival, oh God of revival. What a privilege we have to worship together this morning and what a privilege we have to bring our prayer requests before God and we're going to spend a few moments just praying together and lifting up our requests to him but I just wanted to share a verse of scripture with you from Psalm 62 verse 8. It says, trust in him at all times you people, pour out your hearts to him for God is our refuge. Isn't that wonderful that we can trust him at all times and that we can pour out our hearts to him. So as we pray together right now, I just encourage you to lift up your requests to the Lord and just bring whatever is on your heart, whatever is concerning you right now, just pour it out to him as we lift him up and as we pray together. So Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are with us by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I ask that you would help us right now, Lord, in this time of difficulty when maybe we feel anxious, when maybe we feel afraid. Lord, we come to you. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, that you are in control. So Father, I ask you that you would bless your people as they're pouring out their hearts to you this morning. Lord, I pray that you would come by your Holy Spirit and you'd fill their hearts with your peace, Lord, as we trust you and as we look to you at this time. God, we thank you that you are our refuge. And we all say amen together. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Glasgow Elam. So pleased that you're watching us today in our online service. I want to thank you all for your messages of encouragement and support over the last week. It really is an unusual time that we're living through and uh, we are really grateful for the way that the church has rallied around and offered so much support, encouragement and we thank you too for your, your patience with us as we have tried to shift everything around so that we're still able to do church, perhaps not in the way that we're used to, um, but we're still able to make those connections uh, online and through text and phone and all the rest of it. So thank you. Thank you indeed. One of the things that has been interesting as well is that, and, and encouraging is that people have been asking me how they can give uh, during this time when we're not meeting physically as a church. Uh, we're going to take a moment now to take up our offering this morning uh, and it, it does feel a little unusual and it might seem unusual to you but there will be instructions go up on the screen uh, concerning the different ways that you're able to give to Glasgow Elam today and if you really uh, want to uh, know bank details etc as, as some people have uh, please do get in touch with us. So uh, let's take a moment to look at the details as they go up on the screen and it will give you an opportunity to uh, make your offering to God's work this morning. As I was thinking and praying about what I would say to you today, uh, I thought of a story that's a little bit like the circumstances that we find ourselves in, though I have to say it's just a bit more extreme than what's happening in the UK and across the world today. It's a story that's found um, between 2 Kings 6.24 and right to the end of 2 Kings 7. It's about the city of Samaria, and they found themselves in a lockdown situation. And they had been through a period of peace, uh, and uh, things seemed to be going well. And the next thing, they find themselves uh, besieged by a foreign army, and things are really, really bad. Uh, things are, are just getting totally out of hand 
If you think you've seen panic buying in some of the supermarkets in Glasgow or in other places in the UK that you've you've seen on, on TV, um, y- you want to have been in Samaria back uh, during this time of siege. This was panic buying um, to an extreme. Uh, they were running out of food. Inflation was galloping away. Prices were going up for just about anything that you could eat. It was a really, really extreme situation. And of course, in times like that, leaders are trying to make decisions about how they can best move things forward and how they can uh, look after the people that have been entrusted to their care. And the King of Israel, King Joram, um, he, he finds himself in this place where he just really does not know what to do. And we don't know how he came to this conclusion, but he came to the conclusion that God was to blame for the whole thing. And I don't know, I suppose he, he wanted to, to do something to show uh, some kind of initiative uh, in the situation. And he decided that since God was to blame, he would go after God's prophet Elisha and he would have him killed. Perhaps he thought that if Elisha was out of the way, that things would turn around, things would change. Then there was another character uh, who's just called the king's officer. We're not told what his name was. And, and he's, he's quite cynical about the whole thing. Um, he, he's, he's one of the main characters. And when, uh, when the king sends his soldiers to kill Elisha, um, Elisha makes this statement. He says that in a very short time, God is going to turn everything around. Here's the king blaming God. Um, but Elisha says, look, mark my words. God is going to turn the situation around and food is going to become plentiful again and we're going to be back to business as usual. Um, This officer, this anonymous officer who seems to have been a high-ranking official uh, in the administration of King Joram, he says, not a chance. There's no way that this is going to happen. Well, uh, long story short, it turns around, or God turns it around, exactly as Elisha says. Because shortly afterwards, there are four lepers that we're told about outside the city gates. These guys were socially isolating before uh, that term uh, became one that we're familiar with. And they had to self-isolate because in, in those days, if you had leprosy, you could not mix with other people. So they find themselves... Uh, outside the city gates and uh, outside the camp of the enemy. So they're in a kind of no man's land and they make this decision. They think, well, do you know what? If we just sit here, we're going to die. If we go back into the city, we're going to die in the city. We might as well go over into the enemy camp. And the worst that can happen to us is that uh, the enemies of Israel take us and, and they kill us. So for them, it's a case of let's go and just go into the enemy's camp and and see what comes of that. To their astonishment, when they get to the enemy's camp, they find that there's no one there and there's all this treasure and all this food and uh, they they find themselves with an abundance. And uh, there's no obvious explanation for what happened apart from what the scripture tells us, that, that the Lord has intervened and he has saved Israel. And these four guys, they're in the enemy's camp and they come to their senses and they think, we should really go back and share with everyone back in the city the good news about this amazing victory, this amazing turnaround that God has brought about. And eventually, uh, King Joram, he sends sends out a detachment to find out what's happened. And that's the way the story ends. The siege has been lifted. Everything's turned around and Elisha's words come to pass. They come true. It's business as usual once again in Samaria. Unfortunately for the poor old officer, the cynical old officer, he gets trampled to death um, as a result of of all the excitement that's happening. So uh, it's, uh, it's one of those amazing stories that we find throughout scripture 
of the way that God can turn things around very quickly and the way he sustains his people in time of difficulty. I want to share a few uh, things from this story that I believe will help us to live through what you might call a lockdown situation, a time of lockdown. And these people were in a a real lockdown situation. They didn't have uh, much freedom to move anyway. Um, It really was a crisis situation. And um, the situation that we find ourselves in isn't quite just as extreme as that. But nevertheless, for many of us, there's a lot of fear around, a lot of concern, a lot of uncertainty. So how can we um, navigate uh, lockdown circumstances? How can we make sure that we don't and develop a lockdown mentality in a lockdown world. Well, the first thing I want to draw to your attention is the king and his officer. What they did was uh, they found themselves in this set of circumstances and the way that they reacted um, wasn't very helpful. First of all, the king, he looked in and he decided that God was to blame. You know, sometimes when we look inside and we begin to reflect on things, we begin to make the wrong connections. And the officer, he decided that he would just look around him. And he looked around him and he thought, there's no way this situation can change. There's no way what the prophet Elisha says is going to come to pass. Of course, the mistake that they made was they didn't look up. I want to encourage you throughout this time for however long it lasts, and we don't know. It's a very uncertain time, very unusual time. I want to encourage you, don't just look around and don't just look within, look up. Make sure you look up because if you look up in a world that's locked down, you will not develop a lockdown mentality. And that's so important for us. Whatever's going on around us and whatever we're feeling within us, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and and keep our eyes on, on his ability, God's ability to turn things around. So first thing that we need to remember is when we're living in a lockdown world, look up so that you don't develop a lockdown mentality. And the next thing I want to, to look at for a moment is these four le- lepers socially isolating. They didn't really have much opportunity in the world, or much option rather, in the world of their day. Here they are and they begin to look ahead. They begin to think, well, what should we do? What can we do in this uh, situation? What can we do in this time of siege, this time of difficulty? You know, sometimes when uh, we find ourselves in circumstances that we're not familiar with, it causes us to take initiatives that we wouldn't otherwise take. It causes us to think in ways that we wouldn't otherwise think and, and reason in ways that we wouldn't otherwise reason. I want to suggest to you that even though these circumstances that we find ourselves in, this whole thing with coronavirus is such a big challenge. It's also a time of opportunity. It's a time to take initiatives. It's a time to to think perhaps in ways that we haven't thought before. It's a time when the church is going to have to think in ways that it hasn't thought before. We're faced with the challenge of doing church without a building. And I would guess that For most of us, we've never been in that situation before, yet already you can see right across the land churches taking initiatives, fresh initiatives, new initiatives, and that perhaps they would otherwise not have taken if we weren't faced with the challenges that we are faced with the spread of this virus. So I want to encourage you to, at at this time, to look ahead. And and as these guys looked ahead, what they didn't realize was that God had gone ahead of them and he had already won the battle for them. I, I want to encourage you to say, God's gone ahead of us. God knows when this is going to end. God's going to bring us through this. And, you know, I know it's a cliche, but it's true. Jesus has already won the victory. We can rely on him. He has... He has conquered every spiritual force and power through his death and resurrection. 
And then finally, the last thing that I want to draw your attention to, suggest to you just for a moment, is that we need also not only to look up and to look ahead, we need to look around us. When these guys got into the enemy camp and they found themselves with such a supply of goods that they had never dreamt of, at some point they decided, we need to share this with others. We need to let others in on the secret. I, you know, I think during this time, it's important that we look around us, that we think of others around us. Two of the things that we're emphasizing in uh, this particular set of circumstances are care and connection. We want to make sure that everyone in Glasgow Elam is cared for and we hope that you will feel cared for. And we also want to encourage connection between each other at this time. We're not able to do that physically. We're not able to, to meet at the church building or meet in a, a restaurant or a fast food outlet or whatever or, or in each other's homes at this time. But there's all sorts of ways through um, modern technology that we can stay connected with each other. I know some of our connect groups uh, have got WhatsApp groups and some of us are using Zoom to connect. Um, those are great ways to connect. I, I want to encourage you to, to think of people that you could connect with daily. Do you know what? If we all uh, decided that we were going to connect with three people every day, perhaps send them an encouraging text, make a phone call, um, perhaps even a, a video call through WhatsApp or, or get involved in some sort of a Zoom conversation or Zoom meeting. I think that would keep us so encouraged, so connected. And, and folks, we still need to encourage one another and we can do that. The Bible says that we're to encourage one another daily. And let's pray for each other. Um, let's pray for each other. Let's pray for those around us. We're not sure of all the opportunities that there will be to serve in our local communities and in our city uh, at, at the moment. But as things unfold, those opportunities will become clearer. So let's be in prayer. Let's look out for ways that we can help each other. And let's um, make sure that we stay connected with each other in this time of challenge. So I trust that you will be encouraged uh, that even in this lockdown world that we find ourselves in, that we don't need to develop a lockdown mentality. We can look up, we can look ahead, and we can look around us. Perhaps today you're watching and this is uh, the first time that you've uh, ever watched something like this, uh, or maybe you're watching simply because you're interested in what the church is saying at this time, and, and maybe you couldn't say that, that you know God personally and you don't have that confidence to come before him. Well, let me say this to you. Today, you can know God personally. You can know the God that turned around the siege in Samaria. You can know the God that changes lives and changes situations. All that you have to do is simply to say yes to Jesus. He died on a cross for you. He rose again the third day and he lives in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. All that you need to do is simply to say to him that you want to receive him into your life. All you need to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Thank you that you died for me on the cross and rose from the dead. Today I say yes to you and I put my trust in you as my saviour. I trust that today, if that's you, that you will say yes to him and know the confidence that he gives you, the confidence that he is present with you throughout your life and throughout the circumstances and the challenges that we are currently facing. God bless you and thank you for listening. And remember, stay safe and stay in faith.
without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Don't forget to join us every Sunday at 11am 
on Facebook and YouTube.